Hey, what's up everyone? Now it's time to work on the subfloor. Um, I will cover the whole subfloor first with a, uh, I think it's three to four millimeters linoleum. So it's gonna be, uh, I will use a rubber floor for two purposes. Uh, the first one, the first purpose is to uh, absorb the vibrations uh, made when uh, I will drive the bus and the second purpose will be to try and dampen the sound uh, that is coming from the road, that is coming from driving the bus. I don't have only one roll of uh, linoleum, of rubber flooring. I have different rolls uh, of many size. So it's gonna be like a, a patchwork on the subfloor. There's a lot of them. Um, I'm not sure if I have enough or if I have too much. I would rather have too much of those instead of having not enough, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I still have like uh, two or three rolls uh, in the garage. So uh, I don't know. I'm gonna start working on the garage section first and, uh, and then I'll work with the, the rest of the subfloor because the garage section is a little bit different because it's a little bit lower than the rest of the subfloor so um, that's what I'm gonna try to work on first it's time to glue the vinyl flooring onto the metal floor and for that I have two different kind of uh, adhesive uh, the first one is like the PL premium it's the construction adhesive uh, super strong and, and super efficient so uh, it's gonna be good and the next one is this one so the reason I'm gonna use this one is because I have two different kinds of vinyl flooring. Uh, the first one is pure vinyl and I will be using the construction adhesive, the PL Premium. But for uh, the other uh, vinyl flooring that I have, it's uh, woven. This, it will help, this glue will help actually uh, make a perfect adherence between uh, the metal and the, the vinyl. So this is what I will be using. And uh, so first, let's start with the peel premium because it's easy to apply and I don't need much of the product to be very efficient. So I'm gonna work section by section. I'm gonna remove one section, apply the adhesive, and then put back the vinyl flooring. And then I'll move on to the next section until I reach the front of the bus. I uh, glued down those two sections. It took me one bottle of PL Premium to, to do this. I maybe overdone it on the first section. I maybe put too much glue, but uh, yeah, I wasn't really sure how much I should put, so I did it anyway. Now I'm gonna try the uh, other, other glue uh, on other sections of the bus and see uh, how it goes. This was the first application of uh, the uh, adhesive for the uh, woven, woven fl uh, vinyl flooring. Uh, it's, it's literally my first time ever, so if ever I didn't apply the product properly, uh, even if I used the, the proper tools, well, I'm sorry, bear with me the first time. Now that the vinyl flooring is done, uh, I will have to apply this the same. I will have to do the same thing for the rest of the bus 
and that would be done. All right, so now that all of the robo flooring is all glued down onto the floor, now it's time to uh, take some measurements and uh, cut some woods. The only thing is, the last section that I that I did, uh, that I redid completely, it's just uh, a little bit, the, the, the level of the metal flooring is a little bit lower than the actual floor. So I'm gonna have to adjust and level it up. So this way I'm gonna have a continuous floor. And uh, yeah, because I don't really wanna like make it level. I, I don't want to work uh, on the level as it is right now. Uh, I just wanna make sure that it's the simplest way uh, uh, in the future, uh, in the future video to uh, make the subfloor on top of that without having to uh, cut and uh, yeah I, I don't, I don't want to do that so in order to attach uh, the 2x2 two two that I already, I've already cut and placed I will use these uh, kind of screws it's a wood to metal self uh, tapping screws so those are two inch two and a half inch All right, now that this uh, two by two is uh, put in place, screwed on with the uh, wood to metal self-tapping screws, I will uh, simply continue and uh, make the frame. I put the first two by three by eight that uh, I have since a long time ago. So as you can see, like here it's flush on the floor and then it's flush again where I put this two by two. So obviously there is a gap that I will fill with uh, spray foam. Regarding the wood that I will use, um, I bought the, I bought, I think almost all of the wood that I need for the bus last year during the uh, lumber crisis where they like, increased uh, like crazy the price of the wood for absolutely no reason. I did instead uh, I scraped the internet. I went on a Kijiji website and on a Facebook marketplace um, And that's how I discovered like people selling tons of woods, but literally tons of woods uh, like those two by threes before loading up all of the wood onto uh, the bus to re uh, create the frame I have to trim some of them. Okay, so far I have trimmed all of those um, uh, two by three uh, and there is approximately 18 of them and uh, so for now I'm gonna place them, place all of them uh, all over uh, the floor uh, to recreate the frame and see uh, which one do I have to cut, if I have to cut more uh, and, uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, so <clears throat> I did um, place the first transverse post. Uh, I used a Craig jig to uh, secure it onto the uh, this one and this one over there. I made it really, really flush, really, really tight. I had to use the hammer to uh, place it down. So this one is not gonna move at all. And I also used some deck screws that I still have. So this way I, atta I attached this two by three onto this two by two right here, same as well. So this way uh, it's properly attached and it's already secured. I 
decided to bring the shower pan, the shower base, uh, because I want to see exactly how it would fit uh, with my plan, uh, if everything is okay, if, uh, if everything is uh, right according to my calculations. Right now the framing of the subfloor is done well almost done and I mean almost because I still have to work on the front part of the bus so this is how the uh, basically the, the framing looks like so I have divided some areas I put a beam in the middle uh, so this way the weight and everything will be well supported the thickness of the framing is two and one eighth of an inch uh, because and I kept it that thickness because the rigid insulation that I'm going to install will be the exact same thickness and it will be an R10 uh, insulation. Today I'm finishing insulating the floor and creating the subfloor. So let me show you what I bought uh, specifically for the insulation I am using uh, what's called Durofoam Plus I bought 10 sheets of uh, this specific insulation um, right now what I did I had to cut them in half to fit everything inside the van that I used uh, when I went to Home Depot so that's what I'm gonna use to fill up the whole subfloor And it is done for now it's safe for now so I managed to do maybe three quarter of the insulation on the floor I need to uh, also <clears throat> finish that piece to uh, which is the trap door uh, for the uh, accessing the gas tank but uh, yeah it's uh, it's done now that the subfloor is insulated except the front portion of the bus now it's time to apply uh, the uh, aluminum foil all over it to create like, a vapor barrier before creating the, the subfloor so uh, I'm, I have uh, reflectix so that's what I'm going to use uh, and uh, I have like a, a huge amount of it so this way we'll be able to apply the reflectix probably in one in one go and then i'll start with uh, the subfloor which will be a little bit different than what you can see on other videos because i didn't buy uh, full uh, sheets of uh, plywood because it was and it still is too expensive so instead i'm using planks uh, 12 inch wide uh, wood planks uh, that I will be using for the subfloor so it's a little bit more job for me for now it's just uh, installing the vapor barrier with the reflectix so let's go I bought for $20 uh, enough reflectix to cover around 500 square feet right now it's one row 
one huge roll, I have this the exact same. So what I expect, what I would like to have is to be able to cover the whole floor with only one roll like this one. And the second one would be used to cover the ceiling. So this way we'll have another vapor barrier for the ceiling. So we'll see. Job done. Uh, I put tape, aluminum tape, uh, where it was needed uh, in order to secure and fix the reflectix all over the floor. So it's uh, it's all done. And uh, so this now that this is done, next step just create and uh, assemble the subfloor. <music> It's a few hours later and I am finally uh, done with the subfloor. Not entirely done, almost done, but just this is the result. And uh, yeah, so like I mentioned, it is not a four by eight sheet of plywood that I used. I simply used uh, wood planks, lumber wood planks that I got from mid yeah, way more than a year ago, uh, is when the, the the plywood sheets were were super super crazy expensive. Uh, I got those all from the uh, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, I think I have planks from eight foot to twelve foot long, and they roughly cost each between two dollars and a half to four dollars. Canadian so this was super super cheap and I'm super glad of course uh, there were some planks that were totally trashed so I didn't use them or I didn't use the full length uh, but I was able to like rip some of those manage and so on and so forth eventually right now it worked out I have some planks that are like a little bit little bit higher at some spot uh, there are some edges that are apparent it's not a flat and smooth surface surface obviously um, so what I'm gonna do now is where the, the planks are not very very well aligned altogether I'm gonna use the Craig jig tool I am gonna and then I'm gonna just screw them or, uh, horizontally so this way uh, it will like align them, it will flatten them all together and it will also give a little bit more of sturdiness uh, between the planks. So this way it's not really wavy when I walk, it's gonna be straight and it's gonna be smooth. So uh, that's, that's literally what I have to do. I also have some planks that are a little bit bumpier, a little bit higher uh, and so I cannot uh, it, it was just because of the thickness of the of the wood. Uh, so what I'm gonna do simply, uh, I'm gonna use a uh, my sand belt tool. I'm gonna sand uh, the planks just to make sure that again they're all they they are well aligned. So this way, when I apply the uh, the vinyl flooring, then it's gonna be flat and and not smooth, but it's gonna be a flat surface everywhere. 
So that's it for the video guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I, I hope that you learned something. Uh, if you're in the process of converting your, uh, your school bus as well. And uh, so until next time. Bye guys.